Hey there, adoptive families. It's great to have you back again. Today, we're going to talk about some common myths that exist as we go through life parenting our adopted children. Let's go ahead and start with myth number one. Time ins are better than time outs. Well, first, let me say I'm not a fan of either. <laughs> <laughs> and Journey University, the program that I, I run and work with my clients, we don't use a time in or a time out. But if you are on the fence about which option to choose for you, I definitely am not an advocate for time in. Guys, I think it's all good and well. The principles that stand behind, the, the idea behind time in it's a good concept, right? You've got a child that's been abandoned, a child that's struggling to attach, a child that feels like they're not good enough and that they need to earn your affection and your love because they didn't maintain that with their biological family, right? And so when your child is in their deepest, darkest moments or your child is having to suffer some kind of consequence for choices that they've made, rather than removing them from you and triggering that attachment need and that low self-image that comes from the separations in their past, rather than triggering that, do a time in with them. I've heard this taught, I've heard uh, psychologists on both sides of the fence, but in practical application as a mother to 11 adopted kids, time ins do not work. Now, if they are working for you, you are the exception, not the rule. And so if they're working, okay, keep, keep doing what works. But if they're not working, let me help you understand why. Because the number one thing that an adopted child believes that they need, and when I say believe, I am telling you they fundamentally, deep in the core of who they are, they believe that they cannot trust the world around them, therefore they need to be in charge. And with time ins, guess what happens? The child gets to dictate how long they hold you hostage from everything that you would be doing otherwise. If a child wants to scream and tantrum for 20 minutes while you just stand there with them, there you go. They've decided you're going to have a 20-minute time in. If the child decides that a six-minute tantrum is all that they need, and then you, you go to like resolve the situation and walk away and nope, they don't want you to leave, and so you're stuck with them a little bit longer. Ultimately, what you're doing is fueling the misbelief that they need to be in charge. Guys, a household will never have peace and harmony if a child is in charge. And so from my position, I believe that a child is dysregulated, that a child is struggling with self-control, that is struggling with historic maladaptive behavior sets. And so the way in which we want to move them from those into peace and harmony is through understanding that the ultimate control a child can have is control over their body. And that when they are struggling Oftentimes, their bodies are in control of them. So rather than them trying to control me as their mom, I want them to learn to control themselves. And I want to partner with them in that. So for that reason, we're going to say myth number one, busted. Time ins are not better than time outs. Now, there are more options for that. In Journey University, we use something called a safe space or a safe spot that is different than a timeout. I am not a big fan of timeouts either, but before I had my clinical education and developed the systems and programs that I have, timeout was what I used. And certainly if you aren't able to, to access Journey University uh, or you're on the fence about whether it's right for you and your best options at this point are time in or time out, I would encourage you to use a more time out theory rather than time in. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at myth number two. Myth number two, if you've got an older adopted child that has come to you at an older age, then you should expect extreme behaviors, lots of trauma, and your house to be upside and backwards, and that is just how it's going to be. Busted. Not true. So here's the thing. I had four children that came to me 
under the age of one. And all the other seven kids came at the age of 11 all the way to 18 years old. And I can tell you for sure, now that I've got kids aged 10 through 27, that some of my most compliant, sweet, tender-hearted, well-adapted children came to me as teens. How? How is this possible, Brooke? Oftentimes, guys, it is a matter of the way in which their bodies have interpreted the experiences in their lives. Did they receive nurturing along the way? How did they interpret the relationships in their past? And that is what decides fundamentally how easily they're going to be able to adapt to the expectations of family that you lay before them and how well they're going to be able to use body regulation and coping skills to be able to make the shifts necessary to find success living in a nuclear family despite the fact that they may not have had that somewhere along the way. So there you have it. Statistically speaking, is it harder for kids that are older? Yes. But does that mean it has to be a train wreck? No. As a matter of fact, some of my very favorite members in Journey University, they have kids that are older, that came to them older, and they have found great success in stabilizing their home. So myth busted, older kids do not equal train wreck. There you go. Let's go ahead and take a look at one other myth about adoptive parenting. That if you love them, it'll be enough. You provide structure and stability and love and your child's behaviors will get better. Myth. Guys, I believed that. And doesn't it sound good? It sounds so good that it's something I wish so much was true. And I remember finding out when traditional parenting, structure, love, boundaries, consistency and expectation, consistency and consequences, and all that was happening was it was getting worse. How could it be getting worse? It made no sense. Have you been there? Have you heard that? Guys, here's the thing. If you take a child out of a toxic environment and you pluck them out and place them into a beautiful, safe, stable home, what happens is instead of the home stabilizing the child, the child brings their trauma and turns the home into a Tasmanian devil home. Now there are exceptions to this rule, but overwhelmingly, that is what you're going to find. You're going to find that the stability and the love and the structure doesn't heal the child. You see, you didn't create the deep wounds in the child. You didn't create the maladaptive behaviors within the child. So the child is the one that has to do the work to make the shift out of the maladaptive behavior sets that have set in, out of the maladaptive thinking. And here's the thing. Traditional parenting strategies, love, consistency, it is simply not enough. I know, hard, hard, hard pill to swallow. I would also suggest to you that therapies, as though they are wonderful, they are also not the end all solution. It takes years of work in order for therapies to actually make a big shift for your children. Medications, they can certainly suppress some of the impulsivity or some of the aggression, but again, it's not gonna reframe the maladaptive thinking or help them to choose differently with maladaptive behaviors. At the heart of the problem is a metabolic shift that took place when they were in that really toxic environment and their bodies are fundamentally changed. The chemicals are fundamentally changed. And so you can take this child and put them over here, but without working through how to metabolize out the toxicity that existed here, you're just going to have a toxic child in a more stabilized home. And that stabilized home becomes more frustrated, more rigorous as they try to put boundaries, expectations, and control the out of control child. So rather than the child rising up, typically the home begins to break down. That's a hard one. It was a really hard one for me. And it was the reason that I went, okay, listen, I've got to figure this out because 
the, the advice, all well intended as it was, that we were getting from therapists and our agency workers and people that were involved in our case, well intended, but simply wasn't helping. It wasn't getting better. So that's when I got into trauma-informed care, and I soaked it up like a sponge everywhere and anywhere that I could get that education. I became a certified trauma support specialist and then started building strategies within my own home to be able to help target the cause of the behaviors rather than the behaviors themselves. And over a course of time, I was able to develop tools, strategies, and systems that I then have put into other homes. With years as a private practice, that is now all automated, and it's online through Journey University. You can visit thetraumamama.com to find out more information about how you can enroll in Junior Univer Journey University, but it's a three-part program. It's got our courseware that teaches you what we do instead of timeouts. It teaches you something that I call one, two, three, four parenting, which is a rote memory strategy used in almost all situations with all types of trauma kids when you have an expectation that you need to put on a child or they're ignoring your expectations. It's got a, a whole group of people that are all under the same instruction as a support system and live question and answers with me weekly weekly live Q&As so that we can take what it is that is a theory and a concept and a tool and a system and actually tweak it according to your specific family needs. Because you and I both know that your child is a survivor. And so they figure out ways to try and recapture the control in the home and that we need to work together in order to look at it specifically for you and your family to get the results that you need. All right, guys, myths busted. I hope that this gave you some insights as to why things do or do not work in adoptive families. And certainly I look forward to connecting with you on Facebook at Brooke Hosman Fremo. That's H-O-S-M-A-N hyphen Fremo, F-R-E-M-O-U-W. You can find the page Journey University for Adoptive Parents or hit me up online at thetraumamama.com. We'll see you guys there. Bye-bye.